In lesson one, we noted that each individual pixel in our image had a separate color. Your computer understands and talks about color in a much different way than we humans do. Photoshop doesn't know reds or blues, for example. It knows color values. In our case, RGB values, a set of three numbers describing how the three primaries of red, green, and blue are combined. From just these three primaries, we can create literally millions of distinct colors. So what do these numbers actually mean? To find out, let's open an image. We're going to go up to File, Open, and in my Project Files folder, in the Chapter 1 folder, I'm going to select the image titled Garden, and on the keyboard, I'll press the Return key to invoke the Open button. Now, in Lesson 3, we're going to talk about workspaces and panels, so don't worry if your screen doesn't look exactly like mine does at this point. But what I do need you to have is the Info panel available. I'm going to click on mine here on this tab, and that's the Info panel. If you do not see this on your screen, I want you to go up to the Window menu, scroll down until you see the word Info, and select it. That will pop up the Info panel on your screen. Once the info panel is up, I want you to pay close attention to this left quadrant of the panel where we have spaces for RGB numbers. Now watch what happens as I move the mouse over the image area. Notice that those numbers are populated and they're also continuously updating as I move the mouse. Now these numbers represent the individual red, green, and blue components of the pixel located directly beneath where my mouse is located. So as I move the mouse and it's over a different pixel, I will see a different set of RGB numbers. Now Photoshop's color numbering system works on a scale of 0 to 255, with 0 being no color and 255 equaling maximum color. So as I hover the mouse over this blue area in the sky, we can see that at this pixel I have a red value of 96, a green of 124, and a blue of 172. Of those three primaries, blue is at a higher strength or intensity. It's at a level of 172 versus where the red channel is. Now if I move down here to a warmer part of the image, we can see that it's somewhat reversed. Now the red component of that pixel is at the highest intensity compared to the green and the blue. And this is very important because Photoshop works with numbers. We might think in colors, but Photoshop is doing math and working with numbers. Now let's take a closer look at how these numbers relate to each other. I'm going to move over here to the Tools panel, and at the bottom I'm going to just double click on the foreground color to bring up our color picker. This is going to be a great way to see exactly how Photoshop mixes colors together. Notice down in here I've got our old friends, the R, G, and B values. We said that 0 means no color and 255 means maximum color. If I have my red at 0, my green at 0, and my blue at 0, the color I have up here is black. If I set my red at 255, my green at 255, and my blue at 255, they're all at maximum color, and that in this color model equals white. So watch what happens if I have red at 255 and I turn off green, put that to zero, turn off blue, put that to zero. Now I've got a pure red color. By the same token, if I turn my red off to zero and turn my green on to 255 with the blue at zero, I now have a maximum pure green color. So you can see that there's literally millions of combinations you could have here. Each one of these red, green, and blue values can be anywhere from 0 to 255. Right in the middle, obviously, would be about 128 or 127, depending on how you like to do your math. If I set all of these, the red to 128, the green to 128, and the blue to 128, I now have a neutral mid-tone gray. So the combination of these red, green, and blue values are how Photoshop mixes its entire bucket of colors.